Okay, class, welcome to the very last installment in our citrus class. We're going to be talking about disorders of citrus, and we're going to be talking about lichens, sooty mold, and some nutrient deficiencies you might see. First thing we're going to talk about is lichens. Lichen is just a really interesting thing. It's fun, fungi and algae growing in a symbiotic relationship. It grows on the outsides of trees, but it doesn't really hurt the trees. Lichens are not a plant pathogen. They do not invade the tissue of the bark and cause no damage to the tree. So when you see this, you think it's terrible for the tree, but it, it's not hurting the tree. However, the growth of different kinds of lichen often occurs on trunks, branches, um, and sometimes on citrus leaves, trees. So we do see this on citrus trees. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is lichens. Now lichens is an interesting uh, thing. It's, it's, uh, it's actually a combination of algae and fungi growing together in a symbiotic relationship. But they do, they are not a plant pathogen and do not invade the bark tissue and they do not cause any damage to the tree. They, different kinds of algae, I mean, different kinds of lichen are often visible on the trunks and branches and leaves, sometimes of citrus trees. Now, although the lichens do not cause damage to trees, we do often see lichens associated with trees that are in poor health. And that's because lichen growth is less abundant on healthy, vigorous trees than on neglected, weakened trees that are growing poorly. So it's very much associated with a tree that is in poor condition already. The lichens can come in and, and take advantage and really get a hold of that uh, and grow. So improving the tree health and vigor with cultural practice, practices, including proper fertilization, proper pruning, and avoiding any drought stress can help minimize lichens. So by taking care of the tree, we can take care of the lichens. Now sooty mold is another thing that we see a lot of. And sooty mold is also not in itself a pathogen. Sooty mold is a fungus, but it's not parasitic to the tree. It's not a parasitic organism. So the sooty mold does not penetrate the plant tissue, but grows superficially on honeydew, excretions of white flies, aphids, mealybugs, and scale insects. So it's not a pathogen itself, it's just a fungus taking advantage of this sugary solution that is being excreted by the different other pests that are feeding on this tree. So sooty mold, however, even though it's not a pathogen in itself, it can prevent the sunlight from reaching the leaves by making the fruit black and unattractive as well. Also, fruit covered with sooty mold is smaller and does not color well. Manage sooty mold indirectly by controlling the insects that excrete the honeydew. So, yes, literally the insects, it's a piercing sucking insect. They're feeding somewhere, usually on the bottom sides of the leaves. And you will see the sooty mold on the leaves and the fruit alike, which is gonna be different from what we know about the rust. The rust might damage and sooty mold can sometimes be a little bit confused, but the sooty mold will be on the leaves, whereas the rust will only be on the fruit. So nutrient deficiencies uh, can be very problematic for citrus trees. The symptoms of nutrient deficiency or toxicity may appear differently on the foliage, stems, roots, and fruit. So you, you might, um, you need to sometimes look at different parts of the tree for better indications of what the disease is, and you'll need to know what to expect on the different parts. Symptoms may not in all cases resemble those illustrated here in this presentation or in other publications. So they can differ from plant to plant and it's a good idea to just have a basis, kind of a general idea, and then you can do some other testing to find out exactly what's going on. Symptoms can vary considerably from mild to chronic. Because availability of some micronutrients like zinc, manganese, and iron are soil pH related, Deficiency symptoms of these three elements may occur simultaneously and sometimes mask each other. So basically what they're saying is if your soil is wrong, the pH is not, in the, in the proper, uh, is not proper for the citrus trees. All three of these uh, could be a problem for the tree and you might not, it might be difficult to tell exactly which one because all three of them are going on at the same time. So a lot of times just taking care of the pH will take care of that. Nutri uh, nutritional disorders may be confused with herbicide, fungicide, and physiological disorders, or with plant diseases. So it helps to really uh, 
do some of your research to get this done, and you may need further testing again to, to find out exactly what's going on. Seek advice before committing to costly or perhaps inappropriate corrective measures. It's, again, this, we, we talk about this a lot. It's always important to identify and correctly identify what's going on because you could be spending time and money chasing the wrong solution and the tree is going to be suffering and going downhill the whole time. Uh, and, and you could just, could just be uh, causing more harm than alleviating the situation. So zinc's deficiency. We're going to start with Z. Early stages appear as small blotches of yellow between green veins of the leaf. With severe deficiency, leaves may become increasingly yellow except for the green venal areas. And you can see these really good pictures in here. The, the, the veins themselves are nice and dark uh, with the, the light green pretty much evenly distributed between the spaces. Under severe deficiency conditions, leaves will also be small with narrow pointed tips on the terminal growth. Manganese deficiency. Deficiency in ma with manganese appears as dark green bands along the midrib and main veins surrounded by light green intravenal areas giving a mottled appearance. So here you can see the grain, just like before with the zinc, the, you have the darker veins, but the modeling in between is a little bit less uh, pronounced. It's like if you were to adjust the contrast on a photo to, to in one, it was very much pronounced, and this is a little diffused. As severity increases, the light green intervenal areas give way to yellow bronze coloration. So again, you know, it's darker here, and as you get toward the tip, you might get a little bit of that bronzing. So it's not as uniform as the zinc. Iron deficiency. In mild cases, Leaf veins are slightly darker green than the intravenal areas with symptoms appearing first on new foliage. In severe cases, the intravenal areas become increasingly yellow with entire area eventually becoming ivory in color. So it, as it progresses, you can see again, uh, like the zinc, it's, it, it's not as um, uniformly distributed, the green between the veins and Eventually, you'll get uh, a block, uh, completely washing out, uh, fading out of the color here. Magnesium deficiency. The first symptom is a yellowish green blotch near the base of the leaf between the midrib and the outer ridge. So it starts off as a small little blotch but close to the base, right there between the midrib. The yellow area enlarges until only the green remaining is at the tip and base of the leaf as an inverted V-shape near the midrib. So as it progresses along, you'll see that only the part that is left is this little bit of color here. With acute deficiency, leaves may become entirely yellow bronze and eventually drop. Nitrogen deficiency. Deficiency is expressed by light green to yellow foliage over the entire tree in the absence of any distinctive leaf patterns. So no veins are showing, it's just pretty much light green throughout the entire plant. Um, there's none of this uh, mid-ribs with the darkness and things like that. It's just very even distribution of that light green color. With mild deficiency, foliage will be light green, progressing to yellow as conditions intensify. Potassium deficiency. Fruits are smaller, they have smoother, thinner rinds, and may, and may be subject to splitting and or drop. So here you can see as the degree of deficiency increases, the fruit goes down and down, and you can see how, how nice and, and, and bumpy this is with that, that texture that we're used to with citrus. And as we progress, it gets smoother and smoother and smaller and smaller. And with the thin rind, it is subject to splitting much more easily than if it had a nice thick rind. Of course, citrus can suffer deficiencies in other essential nutrients as well, but the ones that we've talked about in the, already are the ones that are most commonly encountered. The University of Florida has developed an app that uses pictures of leaves to diagnose nutrient deficiencies and leaf diseases. The app is free, and anyone can download and use the app. It's really fascinating what they've done is they took about 20,000 pictures of different leaves with problems, they were able to diagnose the problems, and then they were able to program the computer to recognize these different issues. So they are very effective, and I've already tested it, and it works pretty well. 
Um, the Citrus Diagnostic app is available at www.makecitrusgreatagain.com. You can watch a video by one of the developers, Chris Oswald from the University of Florida. He's going to demonstrate uh, how to use the, uh, the app in a video that we have uh, included the link to in the uh, both on the resources page and in the description to this video. So please check it out and you can really help yourself uh, figure out what's wrong with your trees using this tool. So thank you again. I hope you enjoyed the citrus class. Uh, I personally really enjoy growing citrus in my home garden and I hope you do too.